And we have Morrissey in the studio with us, which is great. Morrissey, thanks for coming. Nice to be here. Now, it's been an incredible success story for the Smiths, especially over the last year. I mean, just from mm. becoming a, a cult band, you're now huge. You're topping every poll there is, practically in all the music press. Are you astonished by it or delighted? Um, I think delighted because we expected it. We had very, um, we had very strong ideals and very high hopes. And we couldn't really consider failure, which a lot of people think is arrogance, but it's not. We were just very sure of what we wanted to do. And I think when you're really sure of what you want to do, you can do it. Why do you think people do accuse you of arrogance? Because I know the music press have got a really rather funny tack towards you. Yes, they do. I think they, I mean, this, this again sounds arrogant, but I think they probably feel that I'm somewhat too clever to do what I do, because, um, which sounds like absolute arrogance, but... Um, I don't think uh, many journalists are really used to people who are making records ha having a very uh, clear, clear statement and very clear vision of where they want to go. It's very unusual, and when it happens, it makes people uneasy. Because the, I mean, the old theory of most rock journalists being failed musicians is another one, isn't it's it? It's absolutely you... true. I find it's absolutely true. Because do you, a lot of your lyrics are, as they say as well, very clever. Do you think they're just annoyed that they didn't write them? <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It makes me sad because it's true, and it makes me sad because I think, I think there's so many people involved in music who really don't consider it to be an art form, and they, they get quite shocked when something serious comes along, and uh, I think that's really sad. Now, your songs are very serious, and the lyrics are all to do with pain, at least I'm, that, that's the way it seems to me. Did you have a very mm. painful youth? Yes, I, I think I did, and um, yes, I, I most certainly did. And it becomes difficult to talk about it because people think it's your, your total standpoint and you're trapped in your adolescence and, and here I am plundering towards 26, yet I'm still talking about those times. I'm not really encased in that period, but it was painful. I mean, it was very troublesome and um, I, I, I can't really forget it. Are you a pessimist though or an optimist? I think I'm an optimist because... I'm here and I'm doing this. I think if I was a total pessimist, I would never have bothered. I would have just, you know, stayed in bed and didn't, didn't bother to do, do anything. So I think I, I'm an optimist. You're getting quite a big chance now because you've got such a, an enormous amount of people who, who worship the Smiths to make very, very good points, especially with the Meet His Murder album. Mm. Now, do you have some sense of responsibility from that point because people are really listening to what you're saying? Yes, I think so, but it's good to have that sense of responsibility. I want it. I mean, if the Smiths were simply just another pop group, there'd be no point, really, because anybody can do that. It's easy. So it's really quite important to have a particularly um, precious um, platform and for people to see you in a particular way. Uh, there are problems. We, we still find it quite difficult to get daytime national airplay because of that reason. But um, mostly it's quite gratifying. Why did the Meat is Murder thing come about? I mean, I, I realise you're a vegetarian, have been for some years, but why do you mm. feel the necessity to get on a soapbox lyrically? Well, because this is something which has never been covered, and, and never been covered certainly in music, or at any rate successfully. And it's something that gets no national attention whatsoever. Everybody's politically aware, there are, there are benefit concerts, there are benefit records, etc. But this is something that people never ever talk about, and. I felt that since there were so many people who felt strongly about it, that it really should have its place. In, uh, music. Well, that's the Smith's track, Meat is Murder, obviously, which put some rather disturbing images over. Now, I know vegetarianism is thought to be a good thing, but isn't it mankind being a little vain? Doesn't it? We're not part of the food chain. Do you see what I mean? Every animal has to kill to live, even if it's just plants. Um, Animals do. Human beings don't. It's unnecessary. People survive without meat. It's just really ignorance, I think, and a certain... Um, it's, uh, people eat meat, I think, for negative reasons. What do you think those reasons are? They just really can't be bothered to think about animal cruelty. Or they can't be bothered to think of another diet. I mean, it's um, too much trouble for people to really sit down and think, well, if I didn't eat this, what could I possibly eat? People just, you know, food is just this ritual. Breakfast is toast dinner, it's meat and whatever. So um, it's just really, people have to be made aware of the situation really. Most people don't know any details about um, vegetarianism or animal slaughter. It's always been associated with a, a young person's thing, vegetarianism anyway, hasn't it? Mm. Back in the 60s as well. Yes. Um, mm. You're obviously still just appealing to young people, but how do you think you're going to get this over to the older generation? Well, if, 
the message can be really cemented within the younger generation. I think that's enough. Uh, everything else will should um, hopefully just um, come in time. But um, I think it's I think it's wishful thinking to try and do too much at once. So I know from the letters I receive, I receive hundreds of letters every single day from people who've said. We've heard this record and now we're vegetarian, so it's a success. whatsoever, I'm glad to say. Morrissey is still here in the studio. Firstly, the other thing he had a, a reputation for a while back was criticising every other mm. band in the music yes. business. I mean, yeah. you haven't done that for a while. Have you, have you they lost They haven't really given me the chance for a long time. I think I've been blacklisted. <laughs> yes, I did that for a long time. I thought it was necessary. Why I do think you... it, well, everybody was, you know, slowly going to sleep towards um, the end of 1983, and I felt that they had to be woken up somehow, so... Is it as bad now, do you think? I mean, does it still depress um, you, things that are happening? I think it's, um, it's changed, but it's still quite glum, really. The old boy network is as strong as ever, and I think that's boring. What do you mean, the old boy network well, in the music business? I think we have our clump of um, people who will always be on television and who will man manipulate airwaves, etc. Like who? Well, I could name names, but it's, it's proved in the past not to be very practical for me. <laughs> I tend to meet people in corridors and studios, etc., and there. Always taller than me. So. <laughs> Do you think things are going to change any? Because everyone's um, waiting for this enormous big sensation that's going to happen again, like I, the way Punk mm, did something that hasn't yet, has it? I don't know. I think um, I think it's difficult. I think doors are, are still firmly closed, and I think um, I know that because the Smiths found it difficult in several areas. I, I felt that um, people were just unwilling to have changed. And for instance, for instance, the, the Jesus and Mary Chain single never had one national daily airtime play. So that proves something. Why, do you think they're particularly anarchic? Do you think Jesus and Mary Chain well, are doing anything new? Well, it, whether they did or not, they never really had the chance to um, get a, um, the, their fair share of exposure. And I feel when people say no to new groups, they're really saying yes to Black Lace and the way things always have been. Is that because perhaps they're a little frightened of new things? Well, I think everybody's comfortable in what they do and why should it really be changed and, um, of course, that's a, a very stale situation. Right, well, let's have another snatch of the Smiths and see, and, uh, we'll see things that aren't old-fashioned and this is really good stuff. Well, clearly the Smiths uh, really are at the height of their success now. How far are you going to take them? Um, it's difficult. I mean, it gets to the stage where now we simply have to maintain things and prolong things. And that's, that, I think, will be the test of our skill. Aren't you really nervous the way that, I mean, a lot of bands who are mega bands now mm. started off much the same way as you are, honest and trying to do mm. something, then it gets so big and you just become like the police or something? I don't think so. I think there's lots of groups who are very, very small, yet, yet they have mega group attitudes. So I think it doesn't really matter what status you're at. You either have the attitude or you don't. And that we certainly don't have that attitude. Money and success and people badgering you from all sides isn't going to change you, is it? Um, I would think not. We don't really have much money. And um, we've um, bypassed opportunities to make a great deal of money. So if we haven't weakened so far, I mean, we've done really well with um, the, the bare essentials that we've had. So I think nothing else has to be proven, really. Right, well, if I can introduce you to Lynn Birkbeck, a resident astrologer, he's actually been charting out your future. Would you like oh, to tell Morrissey yeah. what it holds for him? <laughs> well, I, I, how I see Morrissey as an individual, he's like a flag bearer mm. for um, future values which mm. have yet to be developed. Mm. So he has to be a very unbending personality, very f inflexible, mm. to, uh, so he isn't swayed from his course. Um, about you saying earlier on about him being accused of being arrogant, in a way he has to be because he's putting across a point, and he's, he's naked and exposed in doing so, because you're quite a shy person, aren't you? Really? Very. Yeah. yeah. But he has to put himself up front in the lights, you know. Mm. Um, and people don't miss that point. They say, look, I'm arrogant, you know, which is like sour grapes, really. Mm. Um, but it's, it is so important what um, he, along with the Smith, is putting across are these new values. Um, and I think in the few, next couple of years, you, you are going to be tried. You are going to be forced mm, to compromise, yes. but you will have to not compromise. You, at mm. the same time, um, maintain the essence of your, your vision, yes. if you like. You know, um, I think the, 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 some of your convictions probably do need reevaluating and adjusting. Oh, is this, is this accurate? It. It. Why? Um, I don't know. People tell me this every day. I'm not really sure what they mean. Perhaps we should, you know 
get them together and ask them to elaborate. I don't know. I think it's a very subtle thing. I think it's to do with um, when you as it, sort of um, get on a hobby horse of changing this and that, right? Mm. Um, one has to as well, go, go into full throttle mm. to prove your point. But there are certain bits that have to be adjusted. Mm. Nothing, nothing is simply black or white. As yeah. a Gemini, you should know that. Um, mm. that, that you're going you're gonna to have to adjust a little bit. Well, okay, well, thank you very much. Was that, that giving you the, <laughs> the direction you're needing in life, then, Lord? Yes, it has. No, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you both very much indeed.